let us see example 2 for automatic theorem proving yeah the question is show that negation of q and p implies q logically implies negation of p so this is the question and if you observe carefully what inference will it, what inference will it is so one premise is p implies q right one premise is p implies q this one this is p implies q and another one is uh, negation of q another one is negation of q therefore the conclusion what you are expecting negation of p first one is p plus q second one is negation of q therefore negation of p so which inference will it is it is law of modest tolerance right so that you know that push, that problem we have taken now we are proving that using uh, automatic theorem proving of course automatic theorem proving it's not only just proving inference rules we can prove any a valid conclusion okay this for simplicity i am take I have, I have taken simple examples now see so step one is i have taken the question as it is now i already told you in this in this problem uh, we apply the inference rules initially in the reverse way and in the reverse way we slowly remove uh, one after other the connectives okay and to remove each connective we have rules if and is there before the logical sequence what is the rule Similarly, if and is there after the logical sequence, what is the rule? So that is the one we have five can sequence rules and five antecedent rules. Okay, so that rules should be there in your mind. Then only you can easily apply. But when you are applying initially, I already told you you should remember rules in the reverse way only, right? So now see here. Now first in the step one, I am removing this and. So this and is present where this and is there before logical sequence. And please recollect. If and is present before logical sequence, so uh, that can be removed simply by uh, by keeping a comma. Okay, so therefore, see this negation of Q is as it is, and is replaced with the comma, and this P implies Q is as it is, and negation of P is as it is. So please recollect if and is present before the logical sequence, and so that end can be removed just by replacing with the comma. Okay, so if you want, I'll I'll uh, I'll quickly take you take you to the formulas also. Oh, one minute, yeah, yeah. So if and is there, see this is the rule we already discussed in the last video. Uh, if and is there before the logical sequence, if and this is the rule. If and is there before the logical sequence, that is x and y I have here, then this can be replaced with uh, uh, x comma y. That means and is replaced with the comma right so uh, and anyhow we are applying the rules in the reverse way so we are we are seeing this uh, we are doing this now what you are doing ultimately after removing all the connectives gradually we will left with the string of formulas then we see whether there is an axiom or not so if there are axiom then we will work it back okay yeah now let's come back to that uh, same old question So in the next step, so and is removed. Uh, now, after uh, removing and, so we got this. Now, next step is this negation I am targeting, this negation of Q. Of course, we can target this also, but uh, I am just targeting negation of Q. So negation of Q on the left side, if I want to remove, what should I do? Take to the other side. Okay, negation rule is same, right? For antecedent or consequent, if it is on the right side, take to the left side to remove it. If it is on the left side, then take to the right side to remove it. Okay, so therefore the rule is by applying negation, negation before logical sequence. Now see, this P implies Q is as it is here. This negation of Q, I have taken to the right side. So that is the reason negation of Q, when I take to the right side, it is Q. And this negation of P is as it is. So please observe, please observe these two steps. P implies Q is as it is. And this negation of P is also as it is. Only this negation of Q on the left side, I have taken to the right side, therefore it has become Q, right? So in the next step, next step, this negation I have targeted. Okay, so negation of P on the right side, if you want to remove, take to the other side, that negation can be removed. So therefore, by so now this negation is there after the logical sequence. 
So therefore, what is the rule? This is the rule. Negation after the logical sequence. Anyhow, this Q is as it is. Please see this Q is as it is. And this P implies Q is also as it is. The only thing is that negation of P I have taken to the left side. So therefore, it has become this P as per the rule. As per the rule. Now, finally, implication. So implication. So all the, all uh, now we removed all and we left with only one, this implication. Now implication is there before logical sequence. So if X implies is there before the logical sequence, what is the rule? Keep Y on the left side once, ignore X. Then take X to the right side, ignore Y. There are two rules, okay? So therefore observe carefully here, this P is as it is. And on the right side, Q is as it is, okay? Now, this is y, right? P, P implies Q, X implies Y. So, this Q I have taken, ignoring P, that is one. And second one is, again, is P and Q are as it is. And the, in the P implies Q, in the P implies Q, ignoring Q, I have taken P to the right side. So, this is the P. So, please recollect the formula. If X implies is there before the logical sequence, we get two. Keep Y on the left side, ignore X. Remaining things are as it is. Then take X to the right side and remaining things are as it is. Okay, so two premises we get. Okay, so now if you observe carefully, all, all connectives are removed and finally we left with two sequence and they all these two sequence are axioms, right? Why these are axioms? So because if you see here, Q is common. In this sequence, alpha and beta, Q is common here. Therefore, it's an axiom. And here P is common. So therefore, these two are axioms. Okay. So now the now by this time you realized why you are working in the reverse way. Because finally, actually, I should derive this as beta. This is my beta. Whatever problem is given, that should I derive as a beta. But as per the theorem definition, if alpha is a theorem, and if beta is derived from the alpha, if beta is derived from the alpha by applying like all these consequent and uh, 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 antecedent rules, then beta is also a theorem. Now the point here is, now I should derive this as beta, okay? Then it's a theorem. But the question is, to derive this as a beta, with what alpha I should start that I am not aware, that I don't know. So therefore, we are applying the rules in the reverse way. So when you are applying rules in the reverse way, so what we are doing gradually, all the connectives, one after the other, we are removing, and finally we are we are we are getting we are getting all our axioms. So all axioms are theorems. So therefore, now this is my alpha. Now I got a clue. Now this is my alpha. So I start with I start with this as alpha. Now all the steps simply blindly I write reverse. Then I got this as a beta. Is that clear? So that is the technique here. Why we are applying rules in the reverse way? We need to derive this as a beta so that we can call this a theorem. So to derive that as a beta with what alpha should start, that I don't know. So to know that we are applied the rules in the reverse way. So when I applied in the rules in the reverse way, I got finally two. Uh, two are axioms. So all axioms are theorems as per the definition. So therefore, now see here. I started with these two axioms. I started with these, these two axioms. Now I apply the rules in the correct way. So simply, I'm simply writing the steps in the reverse way. Please observe carefully. The step two, the step two, uh, this is this is written here. Simply written here. In the next step, this is written here. Okay. In the next step, uh, this one is written here. Blindly, blindly, I'm writing. I'm writing the steps in the reverse. Way. And finally, uh, finally, I'm writing this step. Why? Because Earlier, we applied the rules in the reverse way. Now, I applied the rules correct way. Now, observe carefully, my dear students. Now, this is my alpha. Why? Because these are axioms. P comma Q, P comma Q, uh, uh, logical sequence to Q is an axiom. Why? Because Q is common. And P to P comma Q is also an axiom. Why? Because P is common. And all axioms are theorems. So, therefore, this is my alpha. Now, I applied all the rules in the correct way. Now, I got this as a beta. So, therefore, beta is also a theorem. So, and in fact, this, this we need to prove and we prove it, okay? So this is how we work with the automatic theorem of proving. So we started with alpha. Now we just applied rules in uh, all the steps in the reverse way. Then we got the given problem as a beta. So hence, uh, we proved that that is also a theorem. So theorem means what? 
it is so in that way we work with the automatic theorem okay okay thank you